don't know anyone who likes conflict at work, but our next guest says conflict can be an opportunity for positive growth and change. So Dr. Jeremy Pollock is the CEO of Pollock Peace Building Systems, the largest, work, largest workplace conflict management consultant firm. Say that five times fast. Anyway, we're so excited to have you here. Thanks for joining First Coast Living. Thanks for having me. Appreciate of, it. Of course. Before we get into managing workplace conflict, which I'm sure a lot of people are interested in, tell us about your business, uh, Pollock Peace Building Systems. Yes, yeah, so we're an organizational consulting firm, but we're focused on conflict management and peace building in the workplace, which is sort of a new emerging field, but we're, we're basically here to help manage and resolve and even prevent conflicts from happening in the first place. Very nice. I mean, who, do, who doesn't want that, right? So what are some of the common themes you're seeing um, in workplaces? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of themes that we see that are kind of creating conflict, you know, from not setting expectations correctly, from not giving feedback effectively, that sort of thing. But really, to me, it all kind of stems from the top. So the really common theme is leadership has not been trained well in leadership and sort of general management style. So it's like right. if you are a manager, you're used to delegating tasks and uh, making sure people are held accountable. But if you're a leader, you're really a person leader. And you need to understand some skill sets that are related to people leadership. And a lot of people just don't have that training, unfortunately. Oh, right. I mean, that's the thing, too. You you want to work for someone who uh, leads from example in yeah, a way, you yeah. know, but also somebody who will hold you accountable and your, your coworkers accountable, too. Because when they see that, then they feel like, okay, I'm backed up, you know. Absolutely. When, right. When, so, so some leaders we see there, they're they're either too harsh so they don't know how to give effective feedback constructively they don't know mm -hmm. how to give positive feedback or they're on the other extreme which is like they want to be too nice they want to be liked and they're never <laughs> right. willing to hold anybody accountable and then everybody starts losing confidence in them so they have to find that nice middle, middle balance there so how are leaders able to kind of get rid of this conflict or at least assess it well, I, I think number one, they need to have some training. So they need to find, this is why we created the Peaceful Leaders Academy. It's like mm -hmm. one of our main sort of products is people coming in and getting trained as leaders really as a proactive preventative measure for conflict management. But I mean, one of the major things is setting expectations, giving feedback effectively, uh, making sure you come from the heart, you lead from the heart, you lead as a servant leader or a coach leader, mm -hmm. not as like, what some people call a transactional or an authoritarian leader or something right, like that. Right, yeah. yeah, okay, I think that's what I, I hope I relayed that message. That's kind of what I was feeling for yeah. me, like leading by example, but yeah, also um, from that team aspect as well, because we yeah. all work together. Absolutely. And we don't want that conflict daily, right? So how can leaders have difficult conversations with their team members in a healthy way? How do you suggest? So, yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a good question. Feedback is absolutely necessary. We need right. to give people feedback on a regular basis. It needs to be positive feedback. It also needs to be constructive feedback. Uh, one thing I'll say is there's been a lot of good data that suggests we need to be giving positive feedback or at least give, have positive interactions with our team at least five to six times as much as we give constructive or critical right. feedback. So we really need a good trust bank built up. Once we do want to give constructive feedback, we use a, a particular sequence called BEAR, which is behavior, effect, ask, and request. And it's really about focusing on someone's behavior and not on someone's character or, or judging their, their behavior in some way, saying, you know, hey, when you show up late to the meetings, just specific on behavior, uh, the effect that it has on the team is this, is people aren't able to, we aren't able to get through it as quickly or people aren't able to get their jobs done and that sort of thing. And then you ask, you open up the conversation. So it's not a unilateral feedback session. Mm -hmm. It's like a collaborative feedback. Right. What's going on with you? Like, why aren't you showing up late? Or why did you miss the deadline? Is there anything going on? Can we support you in some way? Let them talk for a moment and then you can get to a place where you can start solving, making a request about what would I like to see in the future and that sort of thing. So it's really important to, to separate out behavior from our judgment right. of that behavior. And you just saying it in that different way automatically made my central nervous system relax a little bit. Not that I'm heightened yeah. right now, yeah. but it is interesting how you said, is there any way we can support, is everything okay at home? You yeah. know, that was just Absolutely. a really nice way. So how can we translate this to our home lives? Uh, you know, it's a good question and I, I get this asked uh, a, a lot. I think these skills are so applicable in all walks of life. Right. You can use this at home, you can use this uh, in your community, you can use this with, with your neighbors as well as in your organizations. Being able to separate people's behavior from the interpretation or the effect that it's having and keeping those two things separate. So when you say to your spouse or when you say to your neighbor, hey, when you do that thing, here's how it affects or here's how it impacts me. What's going on for you? What's your experience like? And opening that up so they can feel heard too. Right. It changes the dynamic in any walk of life. 100%. Yeah. Where can we go for more information? This is so fascinating. Yeah, people can go to paulpeacebuilding.com. That's our main website and uh, learn more about us there. 
and I already feel at peace. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And Appreciate helping it. resolve that conflict. And if you'd like to see this interview again, you know you can head to our website as well. That's firstcoastliving.net. There's